Today is Wednesday, November 15th, and this is William Michael of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. Today's a special day for me as a, a student and teacher and Dominican, and for everyone involved with the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. It's the feast day of St. Albert the Great, who was a Dominican who lived in the 13th century. He was most famously the teacher of St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, and is a man who is not studied or admired nearly as much as he deserves to be. I recommend you take some time to learn about St. Albert the Great. Uh, I posted a brief biography of him this morning on the Academy website, and there's also a good biography available on him. You can get it on archive.org um, if you just search for Albert the Great or um, just St. Albert, you can find a biography. But I strongly recommend anyone interested in classical Catholic education spending as much time as they can learning about St. Albert the Great. He is as important as St. Thomas Aquinas, but St. Thomas Aquinas has overshadowed him just as St. Thomas did St. Bonaventure, who's another great classical Catholic scholar. Uh, but take some time today in honor of St. Albert and, and learn about his life and contributions to classical Catholic education. This morning, I received an email from a parent of an academy student asking if I would talk on a certain topic, and that's my intention. <clears throat> I'd like to read the question that was asked and then... I'll talk about it. I believe it will be helpful for many families. He wrote, I was wondering if you might address unsupportive family members in regard to homeschooling. For context, my parents are both passionate, non-Catholic public school teachers and my choice to homeschool has brought a lot of skepticism and hurt feelings. With the holidays approaching, do you have any advice on how to honor them as parents while standing my ground as a parent myself? Really great question, and I'm happy to dig into this. Homeschooling is, as I always say, homeschooling is a radical undertaking in 21st century America. But it's not nearly as radical as it was in 20th century America. I can remember when I was first getting started in teaching as a private school teacher, I thought the homeschool parents were nuts because the school had so much and the homeschool families had so little. And I saw them as, as people who did so much work and made so great sacrifice to really accomplish very, very little. Homeschooling was an idea that I thought was ridiculous at that time. Fast forward to the 21st century and 2023 in particular and things are completely different. Homeschooling in 2023 is nothing like homeschooling in 2000 or 1990. Many people I think have opinions about homeschooling that are based on experiences that they had or examples that they saw years and years ago. They're not aware of the resources available to homeschool families. 
They're not aware of how common homeschooling is. They may be prejudiced by their own preferences, which is fine. But there's a lot of ignorance regarding homeschooling. And, if we're honest, there are a lot of terrible examples of homeschooling students. I can provide lists and lists of examples of families I know who are homeschooling their children and I, I cannot explain why they think they should do so. They have no idea what they're doing. They do a terrible job of providing for the children's education. They don't have the resources to provide for their children's education. And the children are suffering the consequences. I don't know why many people choose to homeschool. So we've got to separate isolated cases of bad examples in homeschooling, which are very present and real from the potential of homeschooling when things are done intelligently with sufficient resources, with competent parents and connections that, that make homeschooling effective. So there's a lot to this, and homeschoolers have to avoid irrational talk about homeschooling as if when someone decides to homeschool their children, they automatically achieve the things that are achieved by the, the most effective homeschool family. So I think a lot of the criticism of homeschooling is just, and we need to respect that. Um, there are a lot of bad examples, as I said, and bad homeschooling can be worse than bad schooling in general. Now, there are a number of number of problems with criticism of homeschooling from public school. Um, teachers or administrators or parents who send their kids to public schools, the criticism is, is irrational for a number of reasons. <coughs> First of all, historically, historically, public schooling was never intended for all American children. Public schooling was created for children who had no access to education. Public schooling is a public welfare service. It's intended to provide a basic education to American children at public expense because those children don't have access to education themselves and will do more harm than good for our country if they are not given at least a basic education, especially in a modern industrial or post-industrial economy. And that's a global economy. Public schooling was not intended to be the way that American children are educated. Public schooling was intended to be a means by which those who had no access to education received at least a basic education in reading, writing, mathematics, citizenship, good habits, and so on. It was also argued for in the 1800s as a means of preventing crime because children were not required to go to school and many children were just left in the streets and there was all sort of trouble and violence. If you know the life of St. John Bosco, you know the kind of boys that he was dealing with and the troubles that they were in. The same thing was present in America, especially with immigration, where many kids were just in the streets idle, causing trouble getting involved in crime, being uh, taken advantage of by business owners. And so the compulsory education laws were established to give those kids a better life and invest in the future of the American people. So anyone 
right from the beginning, anyone who suggests that public schooling is some sort of elite education is just ignorant of the history and origin of public education or, or the fact and reality of it. We can look at the kids in the honors classes. We can look at the sons and daughters of doctors and lawyers sent to public school, but those kids are not supposed to be in public school. And so to take their achievements and hold them up as achievements of the public school system is dishonest at best. The public schools are for the kids whose parents can't afford to send them to private school or to homeschool them. So we need to be clear about that because public schools take credit for all kinds of things accomplished by students who should not be in public schools in the first place. Public education is a socialized service. It's a service of public welfare. We don't tell people, we don't tell parents that they should make use of food stamps, that they should take advantage of free government programs when they have resources to pay for their own. If I'm a, if I'm a wealthy American man and there's a, a, a local clinic that's state-subsidized and they offer a special flu vaccine or you know, flu shot, it's free because the government's paying for it. If I'm a man who has sufficient funds to pay for my own vaccine, I shouldn't go and take the free state-subsidized vaccine because it's not free. It's simply billed to the public. My wife and I faced this kind of situation when we were in graduate school because Financially, we qualified for every kind of welfare service from food stamps to, to WIC to Medicare. Um, all of these different public services were available to us because as graduate students, we had no income. And yet, as my wife and I thought about it, we said to ourselves, these services are not intended for people like us. They're not intended for people who are voluntarily uh, living without income for the sake of their own pursuits of studies and, and career advancement. These services are intended for the poor. They're public welfare services. And so, though we were advised to make use of the free services available that we qualified for by, by the university um, I forget what office it was, maybe student life or something like that. We were advised to make use of those services, but we, we declined to do so for moral reasons. Those services are not intended for people like us. Our, our financial difficulties are voluntary and temporary. We're not poor people. Those services are for the poor, and there's no reason why the American people have to pay for us to have cheaper groceries or health care while we're in grad school. The same argument I would make with respect to public schooling. Just because our state makes quote-unquote free education available, no one who has the means to support private schooling or to homeschool their own children should make use of those public services. They were not intended for such children. And that's a, that's a moral crisis. That's a moral crisis in a society that doesn't listen to the question, or, or to, the, to the exhortation, I should say, that John F. Kennedy gave when he said, Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Sending your children to public school is not doing any favors for your country. It's taking from your country. Just gobbling up, hoarding services that you don't need simply because they're free. That's hardly a Christian spirit that would do something like that. If there was a, a food drive or a, what should I say, a, a soup kitchen on your road and they had a certain amount of food that was donated, that was prepared by volunteers, and you're driving by 
It would be immoral for you to stop and take that food for yourself because it's free when you understand that the intention of that food is to feed the poor and to help those who can't afford their own food. So this, this unrestricted use, this selfish use of, of government resources and public services, I would argue is a problem in modern America and not something that anyone should think is just one of many options to choose from. It's also bad because families who get their kids into public schools who should not be in public schools then pressure and argue for services and resources that don't serve the target students. And, and they, just, they just try to use public resources for their own benefit. They're trying to get their kids you know, a tennis scholarship to an Ivy League school through a public school. And that's not what public schools are for. So I just think that that's a moral issue. And the only people who should even be considering public schools are those who cannot financially support private schools or those who do not have the resources or leisure or competence to educate their own children privately. So that's a big issue, I think. I think there's a historical and a, um, uh, a, a question of purpose in, in public schooling that needs to be addressed. If I can educate my own children, either through private schooling or homeschooling, I should. I should not push my children onto the public and ask the public to pay for my children's education. I, I just think that that is selfish and as far from a Christian spirit as one can get. So that'd be my first, my first objection. And I'm not saying that this should be said to other people. I'm saying as far as my own understanding, thinking myself, talking to myself, reasoning through this, I would, I would make it very clear that public schooling has a proper audience and I am not a member of that audience. So that's issue number one. Secondly, one of the purposes of education, public education, was to educate American children, teaching them to understand the ideas necessary to live in a democratic society. Remember, this democratic society we live in was an experiment. It never existed in history. It was invented in the late 18th century. And really, to this day, we're still figuring out how it works and how it should work and so on. People were coming into America from European nations, and these people had never lived in democratic societies. And so they come to America, and all of a sudden we live with, with no king under a constitution where all of our government officials are elected. We've got state governments, local governments, federal government. It's a very different world to live in. There's a lot of responsibility. As John Adams said, this constitution was intended for a religious and moral people. We can't have chaos. We can't have anarchy. We can't have wild kids running through the streets. There's a certain expectation of morality that's assumed by the constitution, by a democratic government. And kids need to be taught and trained to live in such a society because they have to learn to control their freedoms. So the purpose of the public school was to democratize or Americanize all of these immigrant children and try to develop an intelligent American citizenry capable of voting intelligently and justly. <clears throat> so there's a certain morality that's needed. But this whole idea of democracy was 
an experiment. Now, the whole point, however, of democracy is to respect the freedoms of the members of that democracy. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and so on. Therefore, in the name of democracy, to criticize people for practicing their religion and to have this kind of criticism coming from public school representatives would be evidence that the public schools don't understand their role. It would be proof, if there was pressure coming from public school teachers criticizing parents for practicing their own religion or raising their children according to their own convictions, that would be very clear evidence of why one should not send his children to a public school because they're not actually teaching the Constitution. They're not actually promoting freedom of American citizens. They're simply indoctrinating and trying to use the public school system to produce a single type of student or culture that they prefer. And that is certainly not the purpose of the public school system. So when we get into this question of American education and democracy, if the end result is that people are criticized for their religion or preferences or convictions, well, that just proves how far this idea of American education has fallen. So my first argument, my first thought would be, for whom was public schooling intended? And the answer, at least for my family, would not be my children. And therefore, I would undertake homeschooling or private schooling as a matter of duty. And secondly, understanding that we live in a democratic society where I am free to practice my religion, I would be especially concerned with any pressure coming from public school people who disagree with my religious beliefs trying to guilt me into submitting to their religious beliefs in the name of American public schooling. Nothing could be further from the truth. So that would be the second thing, and that's very common. That's very common. There are many who, who are opinionated, and they have preferences, and they have ambitions, and they see public services as the means of promoting their own interests, which again is immoral. That's not what they're for. And they try to use public resources for private ends. And that's really the evil of what's called party spirit and party politics, where instead of understanding that the American government and its public resources are the possession of all Americans in a democratic society where there is great disagreement, and that disagreement is welcome because uh, our, our, our government exists for the protection of the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness by individuals who disagree on what happiness consists of, any effort to use the government to promote one party against the other is a contradiction of the Constitution itself. The Founding Fathers understood this, and it's, it's important to, to study American history and government. Uh, I, would, I hope that kids join me for my live classes on American history and government because I'm going to make this very clear and show them just how, how balanced and unselfish the American Founding Fathers were in, in being willing to compromise with people that they disagreed with because they respected individual rights. And many in modern America do not. They see democracy as a way to restrict other people or force other people to accept their views, which they consider more democratic. And it's just irrational craziness. 
So that protection of democracy itself and the failure of some people to understand that is another reason that I would be careful not to allow myself to be pressured into sending my kids to school, as it were. So that would be a second issue. Now, once you get into deeper issues like curriculum, educational objectives, and so on, obviously the purpose of the public school system is to provide a basic compulsory education to all children, whoever, you know, and, and I want to make it clear, I respect the American public school system because what they do is necessary. The American public schools will work to educate every single child that's dropped off on the front step of the school building. And that's, that's really beautiful and admirable. It's, it's an amazing benefit that Americans enjoy. I was a public school student myself. And, uh, I mean, my experience in public schooling was great. But then again, I was not in a Christian family. What I was given was good. I also received lots of bad influences from my public school education. But the good has to be considered, you know, in comparison to the alternative, which would have been me having no access to education. So we have to, we have to respect the American public schools. We have to respect those who work in the public schools. We have to judge the public schools justly not pretend that they're supposed to produce Christian students or Catholic students. They're not supposed to produce Harvard graduates and presidents. They're supposed to provide a basic education to the general American public. And that's a public service we all should admire. But we shouldn't allow anyone to pretend it's something more than that. And if it is more than that, if anyone starts to take you know, credit for the so-called achievements of the public schools, a careful examination of those claims will not pan out. First of all, you can start by asking uh, for statistics on the average cost to educate a student in the public school system, and then not allow that cost to be used only to describe the education received by the best students in public schools, but also the cost of the education being received by the worst students in public schools, and it's an incredible burden financially that produces very little in the long run. Secondly, when we talk about the quality of education, a very simple question to ask is, what it, you know, if we think about college and career as the end of, of education from a secular perspective, it's very simple to ask, do colleges and universities and employers, does the military and so on, prefer public school graduates? And the answer is no. There's no preference given to public school students. The military accepts homeschooled students, private school students, public school students, all the same. Colleges and universities accept public school students, private school students, homeschool students, all the same. And so if the destinations for our education have no preference and don't share this opinion, then it's obviously not a valid argument. It's not a true argument. The destinations don't agree. The destinations welcome homeschool students, and therefore any argument against homeschooling is contradicted by the fact that the destinations accept them. So that, again, is ridiculous. To argue that the public schools are better or offer a better curriculum is simply impossible to prove. Private school, you know, average scores and achievements are always better than public schools, and they should be, of course. They shouldn't even be compared. Homeschooling scores uh, may not be better. And this is, I think, a warning that homeschooling parents need to take very seriously. There's no such thing as homeschooling achievement. When you choose to homeschool, you don't automatically achieve things. You can get into homeschool, homeschooling, sorry, you can get into homeschooling and completely destroy your, ch your child's mind. 
You can cause your children to be depressed, confused, ignorant, frustrated, unsuccessful, miserable. That's a reality. You have to be good at homeschooling. So if you're criticized because you appear to be terrible at homeschooling, well, that's a, that's a different issue. And as I said, I can point out people who I know who are terrible at homeschooling. There are people who I would like to call child protection services on because I know that those kids are being robbed by parents who for some bizarre reason have registered them as homeschool students and simply neglect them. Don't do anything remotely close to what they should be doing for the education of their children. So I'm, I'm going to be very honest and say that it's possible that relatives are critical because you may be doing a poor job. And that's simply an honest self-evaluation. Maybe you need to do better. Maybe there are some things that raise red flags as they observe what's going on. Maybe they see problems. Maybe they see things that are concerning. Maybe the criticism is just. Homeschooling is very, very, very difficult. My wife and I are both classicists who have been working in education for decades, and homeschooling is challenging for us. And I look out at Catholics who I know put almost no effort into homeschooling, and I can't even imagine the mess that's going to result from that. I see students who are signed up in our program and just sort of left to themselves. They're 12 years old and they, they can't even spell. They, they lack basic skills. They're disrespectful. They're selfish. They're, they're just sort of wild and left to themselves. I have no idea what those parents are doing. And that also needs to be considered homeschooling. I would be the first to stand up and criticize those parents. But it's got nothing to do with homeschooling, generically speaking. It's got to do with an example, an, an individual case of homeschooling. And so the comparisons are often just irrational. Those representing the public schools take as their examples the best students in the schools. And when they criticize the homeschools, they find bad examples and have the bad examples represent homeschooling and compare them to the good examples of public schooling. All of that's false. All of that's false. So it's just a matter of, of committing to reasonable comparisons, making sure all comparisons are actually fair, um, being honest about observations that people make when they look at homeschooling and see actual cases of it. They don't, they don't, they don't care about what, you know, this, this homeschool student who was admitted to Harvard uh, was able to achieve because that's not what they're looking at, right? So some of the criticism is just and should be a warning to us to make sure that we're not messing around with our children's education and just, you know, getting into this unschooling craziness, which should be criminal. But we've got a responsibility. When we say we're going to homeschool our children, we have a responsibility to homeschool our children, not to just keep them home from school, but to actually educate them and and. It's assumed, it's assumed, rightly I think, that anyone who undertakes homeschooling should be expected to give their children a better education than is available in local schools, whether they're private or public. And if parents are not doing that, if parents are not doing that, then I think those who criticize homeschooling have every right to do so. Because the children are to be considered, not just the parents, but also the children. The children 
have the right, and the Catholic Church teaches this, this isn't an American idea, the Catholic Church teaches that children have the right to choose their own occupations in life, their own states of life. Parents don't have the right to make those decisions for their children. And if parents are restricting the options that their children are going to have by goofing around and playing with this homeschool option, uh, they're, they're acting, I believe, contrary to Catholic teaching on the duties of parents. If parents can't give their children a better education than is already available, either in private schools or in local public schools, then I don't think they should be homeschooling. And as I said, I can point out many families who I know are not giving their children a better education or even an equivalent education to what's available in local schools. I don't understand what motivates many to homeschool when they know that not only are they not capable of giving their children a better education, but they know they're not even trying to give their children a better education. It's bizarre. My own sister did this. She kept her kids home from school and never even, never even did anything to, to teach or educate them. I, I don't understand why some people do that. My wife and I chose to educate our children at home because we're both classicists. We're available to our children 24 hours a day. We're self-employed. We have an incredible amount of resources to share with our children. And we both worked as school teachers and understand the whole system. You know, I, I send my kids to college it's a very simple process for me. There's no reason for me to pay tuition to send my kids to a private school when I can do everything they need myself. And obviously it would make no, even, even less sense to send them to a public school. So there, you know, we have to be honest and realize that there may be just criticism. They may not be criticizing homeschooling generically. They may be criticizing individual examples of homeschooling that are questionable. And that should challenge us to do better. To accept that criticism, to accept that pressure and try to overcome it. So just to summarize, you know, the, 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 the simplest argument was actually the one I gave last, which was the destinations of schooling do not give any preference uh, to, to public schooling, private schooling, or homeschooling. It's all about achievement, and, as, and achievement is measured objectively, and as long as there's achievement, there should be no criticism. So that's the first thing. Employers don't care. In fact, I found that employers actually prefer kids that are not from public schools. The military certainly doesn't care. Uh, just a funny story. When my eldest son, Jonathan, decided to join the military, he was homeschooled, but I, we, had, we had two options for him. We could, we could create a diploma for him as a homeschool student, but we also owned a private school, so we could also present him as a graduate of our private school. We had both options. We asked the recruiter which they preferred, and the recruiter actually said they would prefer the homeschool uh, diploma. So the idea that, that homeschooling is, is frowned upon is false. Employers have always loved the fact that my kids are homeschooled uh, because they don't have a lot of the baggage that public school kids have. The problem with military recruiting is that kids who are in public schools are often exposed to, to bad influences that actually disqualify them from military service. So there are many reasons for the sake of innocence. I, I would probably argue that my wife, who, who thinks very differently than I do, my wife's reasons for homeschooling would have a lot more to do with protecting the innocence of our children and keeping them away from sources of bad habits, especially things like alcohol and drugs, things that can just destroy people's lives. My wife's motive would be their moral protection. And, you know, we, we raise 18-year-old kids who are clean-cut, 
good workers, um, you know, ready to get started in life. And, and those kids are like unicorns in our society. The military can't even find any despite offering incredible benefits. The military offers new recruits sometimes as much as $40,000 as a signing bonus to join the military, and they cannot find enough qualified American recruits. And it's largely because of criminal records. It's because of drug use and other vices that they just, they're already immersed in before they even graduate high school. And they're disqualified from all of the benefits of military careers. It's worth keeping kids out of that system just for the sake of keeping them qualified for more options as they enter into adult life. That would be my wife's principal concern, whereas mine is more academic. Mine is more concerned about uh, upside of education for the kids academically and not so much that moral um, concern. So anyway, the destinations don't agree that kids should be in public schools. They weigh every student individually. They judge every student based on individual achievement. And that should be the only thing anyone talks about. The concern about public schools promoting democracy and then having representatives of public schools criticizing religious parents reveals the problem with thinking of people involved in public education. And then thirdly, considering the original purpose and intent of, of public education, that it was never intended for middle to upper class families to send children as a matter of convenience to give them a quote unquote free school for their kids so their kids could go and prepare for college admission and, and play tennis and golf. That, that's not what public schooling is for. And it's a terrible waste of resources. Now, the, the other thing that I mentioned early on is just how different homeschooling is in the 21st century than it was even 50 years ago, even 30 years ago. I started the Classical Liberal Arts Academy 2008, and the difference between what was available when I started and what's available today is, is almost impossible to believe. When I started in 2008, it was difficult to get kids even connected to the internet. There was very little high-speed internet access. There was no wireless internet access, no Wi-Fi. Um, we had a very difficult time getting kids to be able to even connect with decent speeds to do anything, even to, to download images or, or watch a small video. That was back in 2008. Devices were not available for students. You know, computers cost thousands of dollars at the time. Dell finally came out with a little mini, um, I think they called it like a notebook or something like that, netbook, something like that. And it cost a couple hundred bucks. And that was sort of the beginning of um, computing for students where you could buy a, a 10-year-old kid a, a little laptop that could connect to the internet for 200 bucks. And that, that's where the technology started to change. And then the Chromebook came out and then wireless internet technology continued to develop. And today, it's just, it's just crazy what's possible. I can get my kids a Chromebook for under $200. They can connect to the internet wirelessly. And, you know, my kids are sitting in my living room in the evening watching algebra lectures from college math professors. The public schools don't offer that. The public schools don't offer as good instruction as my kids have in our living room. That's the the fundamental change that's taken place with respect to technology. And in the 21st century, the public school, even though it has so much in terms of financial resources, does not have better resources, does not have better academic resources, does not have better technological resources than are available in homes. My internet speed in my house, in my home office, was faster 
than the internet speed was in my office in the middle of town. I have better services at home than are available in town where the schools and offices and and government buildings are. Technology has flipped the advantage to the side of homeschooling. Now, having said that, that does not mean that homeschooling families, one by one, make use of those advantages. In fact, I argue constantly with homeschool families who are, who are trying to be Amish people and avoid technology with all kinds of stupid arguments about things like screen time and the internet and, and all this stuff. Just, just stupid, bizarre, um, escapist, you know, Amish-like views of technology. Technology makes the greatest education available in your living room. Public schools can't compete. Private schools can't compete. And so long as this technology remains available, because the whole system is is relatively fragile, like any great thing, as long as our society remains stable and we enjoy peace, we have advantages in education that, that can't even be quantified. But as I said, many homeschool families don't take advantage of them. They're, they're still buying paper workbooks for their kids and teaching their kids cursive handwriting when they could be tuning into live classes, watching recorded lectures from the best teachers in the world, and they're simply not making use of those resources. Public schools are limited in their faculty to what's available locally, whereas homeschooling using technology is not so limited. So there are just so many advantages made available through technology uh, that are available to homeschool students for parents who make shrewd use of that technology and all the resources available. Most parents don't even know what's available. Most parents are spitefully refusing to look at it. Um, then there's also financial concerns. Many, many homeschool families I know are just cheapskates. They, they won't pay for the services their kids need. They won't pay for the help their kids need. They look at homeschooling as a way to save money or make their life easier because they don't have to drive kids to school or pay for school lunch, buy school clothes, all this different stuff. Uh, you know, that's obviously the wrong reason to get into homeschooling. So there's, there's, there's good and bad. Um, as far as relationships, because this question also got into relationships, like holiday seasons coming up. I think the issues that I raised can allow you to deal with these issues in a peaceful and respectful way. I think the best thing to do with, rela- with relatives is just shut up because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter what they say. Um, if I was in that situation, I would just let them talk, ask them questions, learn their opinions, ask them to explain their positions, ask them to give some evidence. And what I believe is if their case is actually weak, it'll manifest itself. The weakness of their arguments will become evident not only to you, but to them, if they're just allowed to talk. Because much of what they say is, is ignorant or it's partial, it's not supported by evidence, and so on. And I would just let them do the talking and sort of let them walk themselves into self-contradictions as Socrates would. Take some skill, but I, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't make the subject of Thanksgiving dinner, you know, what Uncle Frank and Aunt Mary think about homeschooling. I, I wouldn't let that be the topic. I also wouldn't get into an argument about it. And if they, if they won't stop, if they're just obnoxious people who are committed to forcing their ideas on others, I would just make other plans. I'd make other plans. There's no reason why the holidays have to be ruined by some rude and disrespectful people 
who imagine that they are, are the only people who have a right to think about education, and anyone who doesn't do what they want is, is stupid or backwards, I'd make other plans. It's not worth it. It's not worth ruining the holidays just to have time with some people who choose to make those events awkward and uncomfortable and annoying. Um, you know, it used to be said that in public you shouldn't talk about politics or religion. And the reason why is because they're deeply personal issues. They're very controversial. And it's just not, it's not respectful to raise them in a public setting. They're private issues and they should be respected as private issues. That's why it's good to learn about other topics for the sake of conversation. You can talk about sports. You can talk about the holiday itself. You can talk about you know, other things in life, other topics, other issues. There's no need to raise the most controversial, timeless dilemmas at the Thanksgiving dinner table uh, because it can get emotional. I know I've had arguments like that myself. Uh, I had an argument once with my parents where I didn't talk to them at all for a year because I was just sick of them pressing ignorant opinions every time we got together. And I finally just said, I'm not interested. Uh, I can find better things to do for the holidays. And that was necessary to change that relationship. So I wouldn't make those things the topics of discussion. I would try to find other things. And if it's just impossible to get along, why allow it to ruin your holidays? I'd rather just make other plans. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. There's a lot to think about. There is a need for self-examination. That criticism from others is not necessarily false. Um, I'm sure one of the reasons why this criticism hurts sometimes is we know there's a, a kernel of truth in it. It's very difficult, and the difficulty can't be equated with failure. Just because something is difficult doesn't mean it's unsuccessful. We have to be constantly working to overcome the failures and weaknesses. That's just part of the work. Um, criticism, though, is often Im unbalanced. It's often unjust. Um, we, d we don't compare apples with apples. So there's a lot of things to consider. Uh, but... You know, criticism of homeschooling in 2023 is, is really pretty ignorant at this point. It's uh, certainly not shared by the destination institutions. It's certainly not democratic. It's certainly not appropriate for the Thanksgiving dinner table. Um, and so I would just... Uh, Try to be respectful if necessary, but if it's, if it's just impossible to avoid, you know, probing, obnoxious questions or comments that are intended to, to you know, upset the parents or, you know, discourage the kids, st stuff like that, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't allow that to continue. We can have Thanksgiving by ourselves if we need to for the sake of peace. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. I'm sure it raises some new questions, some new issues. But this is the kind of stuff I talk about all the time. I talk about Christian arrogance on, on the side of those living the Christian life who think that they're above all criticism or correction or, or um, free from all fault because they're Christians. Uh, our generation makes Christianity very unattractive. And this is one of the problems that I want to try to solve by restoring classical Catholic education. We have made Christianity very unattractive. We have made arguments against Catholicism, arguments against homeschooling, arguments against private schooling. We have made these arguments appear true by many bad examples. That's, that's a challenge that we have to deal with. We can't just call the world stupid because they're not Christians when many of the arguments and criticisms they raise are, are fair. The same was true at the time of the Protestant Reformation. You can criticize Martin Luther and John Calvin and all these Protestant leaders. The problem was that much of what they were saying was true. That's why their movement was so influential. 
the church, remember, had what was called a counter-reformation. The church acknowledged that there were many corrupt elements in the church. This is explained all through the canons and decrees of the Council of Trent. You know, yes, um, the Protestants are wrong in this. That's false teaching. However, at the same time, we do need to fix this because this is this can't go on. So there's usually some truth in criticisms. And as I said, modern generations of Christians over the past three or four hundred years have made many of these criticisms true. We've made Christianity very unattractive. We've, we've caused people to have absolutely no trust in Christian education or Christian family life. We've caused those arguments to appear true. We've given them legs, as it were. And the only way that we can change that is to substantially change the reality, the experience, what people observe, the outcomes, the fruits, and so on. And from what I see, most homeschooling families are not committed to doing that. So I think that that, that lack of trust, the disrespect, the criticism, I think it's going to continue with a degree of justice in it because the homeschooling families do a lot of things that are, that are really stupid and unjustifiable. I deal with them all the time, talking to parents. I can't get parents to supervise their kids' work. I can't get parents to commit to classical studies. I can't get parents to stop talking about math and science. I can't get parents to stop thinking that homeschooling can be accomplished in a few hours each day and that the kids should be free. These faults of modern Christian society are just inexplicable and crazy. Uh, I'd, be, I'd, I'd probably be on the side in many discussions with those who criticize the homeschoolers because of what the individual homeschoolers are doing. So watch out for pride. Change the narrative by changing the outcomes. And be patient because it's going to take a generation or two with significantly different outcomes to change public opinion of Catholic education and especially of homeschooling. So we have to actually be different. We have to actually be better and put better results on the table, not saying, oh, look at our, our, our children score 50 points higher on the essay. That's ridiculous. The public schools take any kid dropped off on the front step. Homeschooling results are 100 points better that's, that's really a declaration of failure because to take the education of only your own children and produce a difference in SAT score of 100 points, a 100-point rise in SAT score is guaranteed by any SAT prep course. So homeschooling families are boasting that their commitment to homeschooling is basically equivalent in outcome to a common SAT prep course. That's a declaration of failure, an embarrassment to hear people saying things like that. So we've got work to do. We need to make their criticisms false. We need to make their objections false. And uh, if we focus on that, we'd probably solve lots of these problems and change their opinion and lead them or convert them to our side and see that things are in fact better. I know in my life, people who criticized me initially have been converted. And I've done that not by arguing with them, but by just changing the outcomes and letting the outcomes speak for themselves. All my kids are going to college. All my kids are successful. Our family's happy. We've overcome difficulties and obstacles along the way. And everybody's silent now. And all of their great public school kids who had all of these resources and appeared to be doing so many things and had so many more opportunities than our kids appear to be to have now as they enter adulthood are lost because there's no more fake public school world for them to be bused to every day. So we've got to change the outcomes. 
and the only way to do that is to work. And so uh, by investing in our kids' education responsibly, by working in a way that's, that's appropriate for such a task, which I always say is a heroic undertaking, we'll change those outcomes and uh, others won't have anything to say anymore because the, the results will speak for themselves. I hope that's helpful. If anything else comes up or if there's any other issues that you have in mind that I, that I didn't address, let me know. It's a, it's a great question, worth our time, worth digging into and, and uh, teasing out into all of its different parts. But uh, I hope that's helpful. I hope that you have a good holiday, uh, Thanksgiving holiday coming up. Um, these, these family issues are difficult, as I said, but be patient. Be patient. Be humble. Acknowledge that, you know, we, we all fall in many things. Uh, criticism of the works we do are just. They're not necessarily uh, respectful or right, but they, they can be just. And uh, we have to learn how to, to be amiable and patient and generous in our relationships with others. And if the situation is just toxic, we have to learn to find other things to do. So I hope that's helpful. But God bless your Thanksgiving holiday and, uh, and bless your family as you, you get prepared for Advent and Christmas season. God bless.